Oh, what's that? Oh, thank you. I'll trade you. All right. Yeah. There you go, Miss Manny. I didn't mark it. Can you put this um, over there in front of the red papers? Give it to Miss Manny. Thank you, sir. You're Team, everyone stand up. Here's what we're going to do right now. Everyone relax, stands. Hands behind your back. If you are three, four, or five, or six years old, three, four, five, and six, have a seat on one of these dots along this line. So have a seat on a dot. So sit right there, sir. Yep. Sammy, go sit over there. If you are seven, have a seat along that line as well. Seven. Donovan, you're seven. How old are you? Okay, I called six-year-olds too. Make sure you're on a dot. So over there, Donovan, there's a dot. There's no dots on that side. If you were 8, 9, 10, or 11, have a seat. Two dots behind them. Two dots behind. Two dots. Everyone else, have a seat on the last line. You have to go ahead. Excuse me, sir. Can you go to that back line over there? Yep. Go to the back line right over there. Have a seat. Have a seat. Okay. Yeah. Go see Mr. Brenner right there. We'll put you on a spot. That's. Okay. Go ahead. Hurry. 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 All right, guys. Everyone, say. So at any point during the seminar today, if you see me clap a certain rhythm, you have to stop what you're doing and clap that exact same rhythm, right? That's how we're going to make sure we're focused and we're listening to what's going on. So let's try that. Pretty simple, right? Give me a thumbs up if you understand. Excellent. So what are we here for tonight? Katarina? Bullying, bullying seminar, right? So moms and dads, this seminar is called Done With Bullying. It was created by some of the best martial artists and martial arts instructors of our generation. T tonight's seminar is going to be a little bit different than you might expect from a martial arts seminar. It's going to be a lot of discussions. It's going to be a lot of sitting and listening and talking and asking questions. And no question is a bad question. Right? If you're being serious and you actually have a question about something, raise your hand and ask. But the first thing I need to check is make sure you're sitting crisscross and you've got your hands on your knees right now and your back is straight. Sir, hands on knees. And we have a lot of people in here today, so we need to be super quiet. Any noise you make is going to make it harder for someone else to hear. So the first thing we're going to start with today is what do you think bullying is? What do you think bullying is? RV. Bullying is when you're being hurtful to someone repeatedly. Mm, okay. RV said you're being hurtful to someone repeatedly. Keep that in your mind. We're going to come back to that. Isaiah. Repeatedly doing something that when they already ask you to stop. Mm -hmm. Repeatedly doing something when they already ask you to stop. Nathan. Say a little bit louder for me, Nathan. Right, maybe annoying someone. Let's say one more answer for now. All right, Aaron. Could happen, right? Absolutely. So there are a lot of really awesome answers. Let's talk about that for a second. I have a question. If someone disagrees with you or gets mad at you, does that make them a bully? No. 
Raise your hand if you think yes. Raise your hand if you think no. Not usually. Some people can just have disagreements. Some people can argue sometimes. That's totally fine. If you meet someone on the first day of school and they say something mean to you and it hurts your feelings, maybe they make fun of you, maybe they make fun of your shoes, your hair, your shirt, is that bullying? Raise your hand if you think yes. Raise your hand if you think no. Right? No. It's bad manners and you could absolutely be upset, upset by that. However, that doesn't make it bullying. If someone does something that bothers you, but you might not be aware, or they might not be aware that it bothers you, does that make them a bully? Raise your hand if you think yes. Raise your hand if you think no. So we're going to talk about two things that make something bullying. Number one is repetitive. Everyone say repetitive. Repetitive. Repetitive means it happens over and over again. Right? It doesn't just happen one time. If something happens one time, it could be bad manners. Right? They might not be a super nice person. However, that doesn't make them a bully. The other thing is intentional. Everyone say intentional. Intentional means it's on purpose. On purpose means they're aware that they're doing it. Raise your hand if you have a nickname. A nickname. Something that someone calls you. Ashlyn, what's your nickname? Ashlyn. What is your nickname? Um, Ash. Ash, okay. So let's say your nickname is Ash, right? However, I call her something else. Let's say I call her a different name. And I don't know that that bothers her. And I say it every day. And Ash never tells me that it, it bothers her. And I keep saying it over and over again because I think she, I think she likes that name. Is that bullying? Raise your hand if you think yes. Raise your hand if you think no. It's not. Because I didn't know that, or she didn't tell me that it bothers her. Now, if she told me, hey, I would appreciate it if you called me by my name or called me this name instead, then that is bullying if I keep doing it. But if I know it bothers her, then I stop. If I don't stop, then that's bullying. And that's also repetitive. I'm doing it over and over and over again. Why do you think somebody bullies somebody else? Why do you think somebody bullies somebody else? Jess? Could be to get attention. Why else? Chase? Right? Maybe they're trying to be cool. And maybe they think that's the way to do it. Kat? Just to get under somebody's skin or be annoying. Could be. Under somebody's skin and be annoying. Isaiah? Oh, it could be to take out their anger. Maybe they had a bad day. 100%. Samantha? Maybe they got bullied. Oh, great answer. Maybe they got bullied. One more. Isaiah? Yeah, maybe, right? So there's a lot of reasons why other people are bullies, right? And there are a few that happen a lot. And some of you guys are already answering them with, you know, you guys remember from last year and the year before no, number one is they're trying to fit in right they see somebody else bullying and they join in because they think that's the way to fit in number two, two they're trying to feel like more by making others feel like less they're trying to feel better about themselves by bullying somebody else right and that helps them feel better about themselves and number three and some of you and one of you says, think of Samantha, is they're being bullied as well, right? And they could be bullied by their older brother or sister, maybe someone in an older grade, maybe their friends, right? They could be being bullied as well. It's important to remember that people who bully others aren't necessarily bad people. They're probably hurting inside. So it's important that we try to mostly have compassion for those people. I'm going to say compassion. They probably aren't as happy or confident as they appear. And when we have compassion for those people, then we start to break the chain. If we get angry at a bully, that makes it worse. Why is it bad to bully others? Why is it bad? Zach? Make you feel bad about themselves. Right, it could make you feel bad about yourself. Mm 
-hmm. For sure. For sure. Hmm. Nathan. Right? It might ruin someone's day. Right? Allie. It could hurt your feelings. It could hurt their feelings. Why else? Two more examples. Brayden. Oh, that's a great answer. Say it a little bit louder, Brayden. Right? And we talked about breaking the chain, right? And if you bully, if you're getting bullied and you bully someone else, well, well then guess what? It makes them want to bully someone else and someone else. And then it never stops. Right? Yeah. One more answer. Samantha. They can get extremely hurt. Right? Bullying has a negative impact on everyone. Has a negative impact on the bully. It has a negative impact on the target and the bystander. Right? Ooh. Does anyone know what a bystander is? Chase? For, right? Somebody who watches, right? Somebody who sees something happening to someone else and doesn't do anything and doesn't step in, right? All successful human interaction is built on trust and respect. And bullying destroys both trust and respect. How would you feel if you, if you were bullied? How would being bullied make you feel? Yes. Sad. Jess? One more time. Depressed. Yeah. Anyone else? Kylie? Mad. Yeah. Hetty? Okay. Forgetful, maybe. Raphael? Down. Down. One more? Yes, sir. Yep, in the back. How would being bullied make you feel? Excluded. Great answer, right? You might not feel like you have a lot of friends. You, you might not feel like you're, you're part of a group. Being bullied can make you feel like you aren't important. Sometimes you might believe what the bully says about you is true. It can make you very unhappy. Also, being bullied can make it more difficult to have friends, right? And how do you think somebody who bullies other people really feels about themselves? Nathan. Maybe they don't care as much as to what happens. Zach. Um, they just, they might not have a great life at home, so they want to keep their anger That's a great answer. Can you say that one more time, Zach, a little bit louder? But they might not have a great life at home, so they take their anger out at school. For sure. All right, one more. Yes, sir. Because they make you sad. Right, they make you sad. <laughs> bullying, bullying might give you a temporary feeling of power or control, but it doesn't make you happy. It can make it more difficult for you to feel good about yourself. It can interfere with making real friends. Do you think bullies have a lot of real, true friends? Everyone say, no, sir. No, sir. When bullying becomes a habit, the results are usually a miserable, lonely life. Right? It might start here in school, right? And then as you get older, if bullying is a habit, it continues throughout your whole life. And bullying does happen in adulthood. And moms and dads will tell you that they have probably seen some bullies in their work. Right? It does happen. It can be different, moms and dads, right? It's a different kind of bullying, but it still happens, right? Making others feel like less. So they feel like more. People who bully others into adulthood often have a hard time keeping a job. They usually, like Zach said, they usually have a troubled f family life. Things are happening at home and it's hard. How do you want to be remembered? As a bully or as a friend? Right? And just, and just answer yourself. I'm assuming we all have the same answer. Your actions now are going to determine how others feel about you later. How would you feel about yourself if you witnessed somebody being bullied and you didn't do anything to help it and you were a bystander? How would you feel about yourself? Deborah? I would feel bad for them. You'd feel bad for them. Isaiah? Guilty. Guilty. Miss Allie? Nervous. Nervous, right? And that's a great answer because is it, is it easy to help someone who's being bullied? 
Yeah. Not always, right? For, for some people in the crowd today, you might say, oh yeah, it's easy, I'll stand up to a bully, a bully no problem. But most people don't feel that way. How else would you feel if you watched someone being bullied and you didn't do anything to help? Yes? Scared. Scared. Samantha? Disappointed. Disappointed. TJ? If the bully bullies somebody else, mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Uh, guys, everyone put your hands down for right now. When you witness bullying and you don't do anything about it, you are failing to help another person in need. Also, when you, when you witness bullying behavior and you stand by and watch, you 100% feel guilty. You also miss a chance to strengthen or build a friendship. Let's say I'm watching Mr. Bobby and he's getting bullied by somebody, right? And... Let's say I'm Mr. Bobby's friend. If I can help him out, it strengthens our bond. It strengthens our friendship. Do you want to be remembered as someone who sticks up for people? Do you want to be remembered as, as someone who's, th who's there for other people? If so, again, how you act today and tomorrow is going to determine how people remember you. So moms and dads, all this week we've handed out our Done With Bullying Pledge. If you didn't get a copy, we'll make sure everyone gets a copy t today before they leave. We're going to recite that pledge right now. And just like with any other pledge in their life, moms and dads, right? they can say it until they're blue in the face, until they actually understand and believe in what it means, it doesn't make a difference. So you guys are going to repeat it after me. And moms, dads, I encourage you to repeat it um, as well. Everyone say, I believe. I believe. Everyone has the right to feel safe. Everyone has the right to feel safe. I will commit. I will commit. To. To. Standing strong against bullying. Standing strong against bullying. I will treat others. I will treat others. With respect. With respect. And kindness. And kindness. I have the compassion. To not, be a bully. to not be a bully. And the courage, and the courage to, not to not be a bystander. It is my responsibility, is my responsibility to, help others who are being bullied, to help others who are being bullied and to report bullying when I see it or when it happens to me. I will not stand by. I will stand up. And guys, what's important is that you remember that it is now your responsibility, right? You know, or by the end of this, you will know better how to help yourself and how to help others. And moms, dads, I look at a lot like CPR, right? If you see someone choking or, or like, you know, not breathing and you know CPR, but you don't go help them or try to help them, right? You're responsible for it, right? You have to help someone who needs that help. It's the exact same thing. Someone needs your help, right? So here's what we're going to do in a second. That concludes our very first part. What is bullying? What about bullying that we can learn? And remember, the number one thing to take away from it, right, is what is bullying? It's intentional actions done repetitively over and over again and on purpose. Everyone say over and over. Over and over. Everyone say on purpose. On purpose. It happens consistently and they're doing it on purpose. Well, you don't say that part. It happens consistently. I'm glad you're paying attention. And they're doing it on purpose, right? And the other thing, a lot of you guys all had the same answers. How would you feel if you were being bullied? How would you feel if you saw someone being bullied and didn't do anything, right? How would you feel if you watched someone being bullied? How would you feel if you were bullying someone else? And I don't want you to raise your hand for this part because all of you had the same answers. S sad, upset, disappointed, guilty, right? Remember that. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, here's what we're going to do. Remember exactly where you are. So look at who's next to you. Look at who's on the other side. So we're going to break our session up by just a little bit of moving. Everyone say fishbowl. Fishbowl. I need four leaders for the team who know how to play the drill fishbowl. All right? Let's see here. Can I have Isaiah, Evan, Nathan, and Paul stand up?
check your crisscross. Here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to have your hands up, and you guys are going to shuffle anywhere around the mat, avoiding anyone in their spot. So, and you can go anywhere, but you can't touch anyone or anything. Ready? Go. Start shuffling. So you're shuffling anywhere around the mat. You can't touch anyone or anything. And that's fish up oh, without going under the bags. Nice try, Mr. Paul. Paul, say yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So you can't touch anyone or anything. You can't go in the bags or off the mat. We're going to all try this together. It involves a lot of focus. You have to be paying attention to what you're doing. Everyone stand up. Ready. Yes, sir. Three, two, one, go. And freeze. Freeze exactly where you are. All right, so we're going to try it again. Stand up on your feet. Rule number one, totally silent. Rule number two, you're not running, you're quietly moving around. Right? The only time you bump into someone, or the only time you fall, is when you stop paying attention. So let's try it again. Hands up. Ever start moving around? Freeze! Go! <laughs> Done with bullying pledge one more time. Yeah. All right, so make sure you're super <laughs> quiet in your spot. Everyone, I believe. I Who would like to come up here and read it and have the class read it? All right, Emmy, come on up. Emmy, from right here. All right, so so Emmy's gonna say a part and you're gonna repeat it after Emmy. I believe. should and shouldn't do if you see someone else being bullied. Who's ever seen a friend or a family member or any, or even just a classmate? Who's ever seen someone getting bullied before? Raise yeah. your hand. It's, it's not fun. No. Right? It's, it's not fun. You feel sad. Yeah. You feel upset. You feel hurt. So put your hands down. But again, it's not easy to stand up to a bully. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how you can stand up for your friends, how you can stand up for your family. 
how you can stand up for classmates. But number one, if you see someone being teased or bullied, is it okay to, is it okay to join in? No. No, no sir. I'm gonna say no, sir. No, sir. Joining in only gives strength to the bully. Plus, you will probably feel really awful about it afterwards. Is it okay to stand by and watch? No, no sir. No, bullies want an audience. They want people to see, to, to see what's happening and they want people to laugh at the person who's being bullied, right? If you take that away from them, if you take away their audience, if you don't watch, if you don't listen, then the bully isn't really getting what they want out of the situation. Here's the big one. If you see someone being teased or bullied, is it okay to just pretend like you didn't see anything? No, no sir! Everybody say no, sir. No, sir! When you look the other way and pretend that you don't see what's happening, you give that bully power to continue bullying. Once you and your friends decide to not tolerate bullying and take action, it won't, it won't happen as frequent. It might not be totally done and, and, and out of your school, but it won't happen as frequent. Does that make sense? Yes, sir! Now, do you think it's easy to take a, a stand against bullying? No, sir! Absolutely not. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of confidence. That's why not too many people do it. You see, most kids don't like watching other people being bullied. However, they're afraid that if they stand up to a bully, that they'll be called a tattletale. And I'm telling you right now, it's not tattletaling. It's what's called reporting. Everyone say reporting. Reporting! And I'll tell you this, tattletaling is if I'm trying to get you in trouble. If I look at Brayden and I say, Brayden, right, where's your pencil? And we're supposed to have a pencil today in school, and he doesn't have a pencil, I tell the teacher that Brayden doesn't have a pencil because I want to get him in trouble, and I want the teacher to be happy that I have a pencil. That is tattletaling, right? I want him to get in trouble, right? Reporting is Brayden's being bullied, and it's my responsibility to help him so I report to the teacher what's happening. Does that make sense? Yes, sir! Yeah, and remember, if we're not reporting, we're being a bystander. If we do report what's happening, we're being what's called an, an upstander. Everyone say, upstander! Upstander! And an upstander is someone who takes that stand against bullying. It's someone who doesn't tolerate bullying, and they want to see it done. Now, here's what's going to happen in a second. We're going to go through four scenarios. So I'm going to need some volunteers up here in a minute. Don't raise your hand yet. Put your hands on your knees and make sure you're sitting crisscross. I'm going to need some volunteers up here in a minute. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're doing. So don't worry. You don't have to be perfect. But these four scenarios are going to involve you learning how to stand up to a bully when you see a friend being bullied. Does that make sense? Yes, sir! So here's what we're going to do. If you would like to be a volunteer, quietly now, raise your hand. And if you don't get picked for the first one, you might get picked for one a little bit later. So that's totally fine. Samantha, come on. Awesome. All right, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you guys about one minute. You need to stay seated in your spot during that minute. You can talk quietly to your friends next to you. You can sit quietly. If, there's, if the person next to you is, is not someone you know, take a second to introduce yourself. If you don't want to talk about anything specific, play rock, paper, scissors. Right? But you keep it to a whisper. I need to be able to talk to Miss Samantha. And you're going to talk amongst yourselves for one minute. Face your partner next to you. Miss Samantha, how are you?
Tied. Okay, so scenario number one. All right, this is one easy way to help a friend who's being bullied. In this scenario, let me tell you what's going on. Miss Samantha over here is in my class. I am the bully. Now, Miss Mandy over here is also in the class. And let's say in this class, Miss Mandy knows I'm the bully, and she knows that Miss Samantha is usually a target of mine. So she wants to help Samantha. But she's not going to stand up to me in a way you might think. All right, so we're going to see what happens. In this scenario, Miss Mary over there is the teacher. And maybe Miss Mary's grading her papers, maybe she's sitting at her desk. Maybe she's talking to another student, right? But maybe she doesn't see exactly what happens at first. All right, so I'm the bully. I'm gonna walk up to Miss Samantha. So check your lips, make sure you're super silent, and let's see what happens. So check your crisscross. All right, so I'm the bully. All right. Hey, Samantha, Miss Mary brought a cool game today. Let's go check it out. Come on, come on. Everyone say, freeze! Freeze! What do you think happened in that situation right there? It was really quick, and it was kind of silly, right? But let's talk about it. Okay. Jess. We were about to bully her, but Aunt Mandy came in, and she didn't want to bully her. Right. Does it matter what Miss Mandy really said? No. no. Yes, sir. No, say no, no, sir. No, sir. Right. She could say, let's go see the teacher. She could say, Hey, I got a cool new game I want to show you. She could say, hey, I want to ask you a question over here. She could say, hey, there's a basketball game going on outside. Let's go play, right? What matters is that where is Samantha now? With the teacher. With the teacher, right? Am I the bully? Am I going to go over and am I going to try to bully Samantha in front of the teacher? No, no sir. Everyone say, no, sir. No, sir. Now here's the even bigger question. Did Miss Mandy try to stand up to me? No, no sir. Did Miss Mandy scream at me? No, sir. Hit me? No, sir. Kick me? No, sir. Punch me? No, sir. Push me? No, sir. Bully me? No, sir. She didn't do any of that. Did she even talk to me? No, sir. Not even a bit. Great crisscross there, Deborah. I like that. So, but the matter of fact is that Samantha is now safe. Miss Mary can now find out what's going on and she can help Samantha. And Miss Mandy was able to do that without any interference to me. So let's give those guys a big round of applause. And that's called Get There First. Get There First! Get There First! All right, so we're gonna go over another scenario. So I need another volunteer. Somebody sitting crisscross, their hands on their knees. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon. Okay, come on up here, Brandon. Miss Minnie, can I borrow you again? Yes, sir. All right, again, same thing as before. One minute, you can quietly talk amongst yourselves. You can play rock, paper, scissors. All right, right? So I shouldn't see people moving all around. So make sure you stay in your spot. All right, so stay in your spot. Keep playing rock, paper, scissors. situation is pretty much the same. We're in class. Miss Mary's at her desk. Miss Mandy knows I'm the bully of the class. 
Brandon over here. All right. I'm going to bully Brandon. And Miss Manny's actually going to hear it happening this time. And we'll see what happens. All right. So check your lips. Make sure you're super quiet. You're sitting crisscross. And your back is straight. All right. Hey, Brandon. What's going on with your socks? Why would you even wear socks? Socks just are cool. Those kind of look hey, like loser socks. That's not nice. You're being a bully. Please stop. Brandon, come with me. Everyone say, freeze. Freeze. What happened in that situation? Brought him to where? The teacher. the teacher, right? Everyone say, step in! Step in! Take charge! Take charge! So step in and take charge, right? This one is a little bit more daring, right? So Miss Mandy actually spoke to me. But guess what? When Miss Mandy looked at me and said, stop it, you're being a bully, right? That gives her a, ch a chance to take Brandon over the teacher. Do you think a bully expects someone to stand up to them? No, 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 sir. No, sir. They sure don't. Absolutely not. Ever check crisscross? They absolutely do not. So when that does happen, it takes them by surprise and gives them a chance to go over to the teacher. Ever give Brandon a big round of applause? <laughs> All right, here's what's gonna happen. We have two more scenarios. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, uh, yeah, everyone quiet to stand up. Everyone, hands up by your cheeks. Everyone say squat. Squat. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do as many squats as you can. Now watch me first. I'm gonna go down nice and low, all the way back up for 30 seconds. Miss Mary, in your spot, TJ. You have to stay on your spot. Miss Mary's gonna take over for our next two sections. Our next two scenarios, so everyone hands up. 30 seconds of black belt squats. Three, two, one, go.
say something not nice to me? Are you teach karate? That's so, that's stupid. It's a waste of time. I'm a tea guy. Hello. I say, go play outside. Awesome. What else could you say? Yeah, you could. So also, if you're gonna distract somebody, you could say something to the spider like, "Oh, those stars are pretty cool," and then you then we go away, right? We get out of bed. Okay. There we go. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Okay. So basically, what TJ did was he tried to distract the bully. He didn't have to say anything to him except for to make him hesitate for a second and say, "Oh." Yeah, my stars are pretty cool. And then we were gone. We were out of there, okay? So he didn't have to confront him or anything like that. He just distracted him, okay? And then the other way that we're going to do is I need one more volunteer. Actually, two volunteers. So let's see. Ryan. Me, me. And that's me. I'm Ryan. <laughs> this is Ryan also. Okay, have a seat for a second though, Ryan. Okay. Maybe we'll do it the next time. And Jacob. Alright, so carry on part six of your rock, paper, scissors, or keep quietly. comfortable intervening, he didn't feel comfortable doing some of the other things, but he knew that if he got to his teacher right away, he could let that teacher know what was going on. And he wasn't he wasn't tattletaling because he wasn't trying to get Ryan in trouble, he was trying to save me from being um, called names or made fun of. So that's our last one is our report. Alright right, team everyone check your crisscross excellence so we have one more part that we're going to do today, and that's how to handle if you're being bullied yourself. We talked about the details about bullying, what it is, what it isn't, how you feel. We talked about how to help a friend. Now we're going to talk about five steps that you can take to help yourself from being bullied. Right? So we, we only have a little bit of time left. Right? Moms and dads, just before we finish up in just a little bit, I just want to say how proud we are of the students who are here tonight. Right? One of my favorite stories in the world, and I won't spend a lot of time telling you because you know we've been sitting around and listening a lot, is the story of a star, of the star, starfish. And there was a little boy on the beach who was picking up each starfish and throwing it back into the water. Right? He, he would pick up a starfish that got washed on the beach and he would throw it back in. He would pick up another one and throw it back in. Eventually an old man came up to him and said, what are you doing? You can't help them all. You can't make a difference. And he said, well, I can make a difference to that one. And he threw another starfish in, and to that one, and to that one, right? You individually might think to yourself, I can't make a difference, I can't stop bullying. You can make a difference to one person. You can make a difference to another person. And then that makes difference to another person. And again, so here's what we're gonna do. Everyone stand up. All right, we have one little exercise we're gonna do in our spot, and then we'll finish up with our last part. Everyone, hands up. Everyone, say, tell a story. Tell a story. Squats. Squats. So here's what's gonna happen. Everyone, watch me. Hands up by your cheeks. 
Everyone just start jogging in your spot. I'm going to start telling a story. Oh, Breeze. Here are the rules of our jogging. You need to stay in your spot, and you have to face front. So you can't spin around. You can't move from your spot. And you got to be super quiet. Everyone hands up. Everyone start jogging. Up, Breeze. I already hear folks talking. we got to be super quiet so you can hear it. Everyone hands up. Close your lips and start jogging. Here's my story. I'm going to tell a story. If you hear a letter or you hear a word that begins with the letter T, you do a squat. If that sentence has more than one word that begins with the letter T, you do two squats or three squats. Seven so hands up. So you have to really listen close. So make sure you're jogging. Your hands are up. You're facing front. I saw a tree. That's one. I saw a tree. I saw a tree. I saw a tree. It was a terrific tree. It was a tremendously terrific tree. That tree was so tremendously terrific. I saw a monkey on that tree. That monkey swang from one tremendously terrific tree to another tremendously terrific tree. My mistake. That monkey swung from one tremendously terrific tree to another tremendously terrific tree. Tall monkey swung from one tremendously terrific tree to another tremendously terrific tree. Mr. Bobby's going to hand it up to your moms and dads. Moms and dads, if you already have one, you don't need another one. If you already had one, maybe you lost it, please take another one. Even if you just get a few, a few of your friends or family to recite the pledge. All right, who's sitting crisscross? Who's a little tired? I understand. We're almost finished up. You guys were awesome. Moms and dads. Oh, everyone check your crisscross. <laughs> it's not easy to sit here quietly for almost, we're pushing an hour now, right? So we're almost finished up. But again, remember everything you learned here tonight, you have to review it. So who's got their hands totally still? This last part is called the five rules. Everyone say five rules. Five rules. Of five. personal safety. Personal safety. These are the five rules of personal safety. Each rule is in a spot for a reason. They're not meant to be switched around or interchanged. They need to be, they need to be used in order. And you'll explain or you'll hear why in just a second. Number one is use your mind. Use your mind. Let's use try it again. Everyone say use your mind. Use your mind. Your mind. Let's try it again without screaming. Everyone say use your mind. Use your mind. Use your mind. Use your mind. Oh, who's the quietest right now? Right. Use your mind means that you think about the ways that you can show more confidence and hopefully avoid being bullied in the first place. So there's a couple things that we talk about here at Action that you can do. Number one, when you talk to somebody, where do you look? Samantha. In their eyes. When you shake someone's hand. Do you give them a weak and wimpy handshake or a strong handshake? Strong Isaiah. handshake. Strong and firm handshake. Str strong and firm handshake, right? 
When you speak, you speak clearly when you raise your hand. How do you raise it? Do you raise it here or all the way up? All the way Everyone way. show me. All the way oh, up. you don't have to say it, just show me. All right, put your hands down. And finally, using your mind means to practice safe habits. If you're in school and you know that there's a bully that always hangs out over by the basketball court, maybe during recess, you don't go over by the basketball court. Maybe you stick around with your friends or you stick around with your friends and you're close to the teacher. Using your mind is the number one step in helping to prevent you from being bullied yourself. Number two is use your words. Ever say, use your words. Use your words. Your words. So I want everyone to stand up. I need you guys to put your hands out like this. Make a serious face, as serious as can be. And some of you guys are super friendly. You're not allowed to smile. Everyone say, stop! 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 Leave me alone! Leave me alone! All right, now let's try it again. Ready? Stop! 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 Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Right, and you want to be as loud as you can. So guess who can hear it? The teacher, right? What's the problem with this? What's the problem with that, Raphael? It looks like I want to do what? Fight. It looks like I want to fight. That's not what we want to do. And guess what? Let's say Mr. Brenner is the teacher, right? And Raphael is bullying me. If I say, stop, leave me alone, Mr. Brenner thinks something's going on. If I say, stop, leave me alone, Mr. Brenner thinks I'm trying to cause a fight. Does that make sense? Yes, yes sir. Not this. This. Let's try it again. Stop. Stop. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Everyone have a seat. Everyone say, use your mind. Use your mind. Use your words. Use your words. Use your legs. Use your legs. Use your legs. Rule number three is use your legs. Use your legs. Now I'm going to tell you why, so check your lips. That doesn't mean kick. What do you think it means? Braden. It means you walk away. Everyone say, walk away. Walk away. Guess what? If someone says something to you, don't care. Walk away. If you pretend like it doesn't even bother you, guess what? It makes it easier for you to avoid being bullied. It makes it harder for that boy to, to care about what's going on if you don't care. Number four is ask for help. Remember to ask for help. Ask for help. Ask for help means you go ask for help. Moms and dads are only able to help you if they know what's going on. The worst possible thing is if you're being bullied, the worst possible thing that can happen is if you're being bullied and you do not tell your mom or dad. Because guess what? They're on your side. And if something happens in school where you were being bullied and you defend yourself, right, and you get in trouble for it, mom and dad need to be on your side. And they can't be on your side. They can't have your back if they don't know what's going on. You need to tell mom and dad what's going on. Number five is defend yourself. Everyone say defend yourself. Defend yourself. Mom and dad, here's what I'll say. This is the final part of our session tonight. I'm so happy you guys had, had chosen to come out and spend your night with us. I know you could be anywhere else, right? But I appreciate you believing in this mission as much as us. So number five is defend yourself for a reason. Defend yourself is the absolute last possible thing in any bullying situation. Use your mind, use your words, use your legs, ask for help, and defend yourself. And moms and dads, I'm presenting what our school believes in, what Action Karate believes in when it comes to done with bullying. If you disagree with any of this, that's your right, it's your family. But what you have to do is have that discussion with your child. Because ultimately, it's not going to get, or it's, if you get in trouble for, for, any of, uh, for any of this in school, defending yourself, because that does happen sometimes, unfortunately, the number one person that you need to have your back is mom and dad. And so moms and dads, please have that discussion with your child what you want them to do, 
and what you're okay with as a family. Because ultimately, right, that's what matters. So here's what we're going to do. Everyone stand up. Oh, this isn't, isn't over. We're doing one more part. This is the end of it. Okay. Cool. So everyone hands up. All right. So hands out. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through all five steps right now as the final part. Everyone said, use your mind. Use your mind. We talked about confidence, right? So number one, check to make sure your back is straight. Check to make sure your hands are out. Check your face to make sure it's serious. Number two, use your words. Everyone say, stop. Stop. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Rule number three is use your legs. Pretend to walk away, but stay in your spot. Rule number four is ask for help. Everyone say, parent. Hey! Teacher. Teacher. Principal. Principal. Guidance counselor. Guidance counselor. Crossing guard. Crossing guard. Ask for help from anyone. And police. Karate teacher. Karate teacher. Ever say karate teacher? Karate teacher. Right? Someone has to know what's going on. And rule number five is defend yourself. Say defend yourself. Defend yourself. Is anyone allowed to touch you? No. I would say, no, sir. No, sir. Is anyone allowed to hit you? No, sir. Now, everyone hands up like this. What I want you to do is I'm going to say go. This is someone that's coming at you. So what you're going to do, you're going to take your back hand, and all you're going to do is you're going to do a palm. And the palm's going to go right to the shoulder, push the person away from you. Again, mom and dad, this is the only physical part that we teach. If you don't agree with this, talk to your child. Everyone hands up. When I say go, you're going to twist into it and palm say us ah, and right back. Ready? I didn't say go. And go. Awesome. Red, go. Awesome. Go. Awesome. Everyone, have a seat, crisscross. Check your crisscross. Mom, dad, one more thing before Mr. Brenner finishes up with us and a group picture. If you are a part of any groups, scouts, church group, youth group, we put on this program most of the time for free, right? And we'd be more than happy to do this program in the schools and the, in the churches and the daycares and the youth groups and the scouts, all that stuff. Some of you guys have done it for already, right? If that's something you want to do, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to do it. Everyone check your crisscross. Mr. Brenner, we're all yours when we finish up, sir. Thank you. Everyone give Mr. Brenner a big round of applause. Yeah. 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 Yeah.